In this video, we're going to talk about how to make the geometry on the Be Quiet fan blades using Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in this video, we're gonna tackle another user question that came in when I was asking for input about surfacing videos. Now, this one is a bit interesting and the solution is actually not surfaces. So this video is gonna live in the Forms Mastery series, but I did wanna talk about why I chose to do this video, why I wanted to talk about this, and why it's important to understand all the tools that Fusion has to offer so you can make the best decision for your models. So if you wanna take a look at this fan itself being modeled, I put a link in the description below to the user's channel. So he did cover this, um, or at least there's a video showing this model being created. And the fan model itself is available for download on GrabCAD. So I'm not gonna be providing the entire fan model. What I am gonna be providing is going to be the hub the fan blade that was modeled, and then a copy of the fan before the geometry was added. So the reason that we're gonna do this is because I wanna talk about the decisions that we need to make when we're thinking about modeling something and why it's important we understand all the tools. So the way that the user did this was to create some very ingenious geometry using the pipe tool and blending things in at the end. Now this is obviously going to take a long time. You're going to have to create a lot of curves that are projected onto the surface of the blade. You're going to have to have a lot of geometry, a lot of sketches, a lot of features in the timeline. Now to do this with surfaces, and I'll actually bring up an image that they sent me, um, to do this with surfaces to get this sort of organic blended geometry would be extremely difficult. So in general, the surface tools aren't going to give you something that is better than the solid tools. It's just a way that we can work on individual faces of geometry rather than an entire enclosed solid body or Boolean operation, such as combining, subtracting, or intersecting with solid bodies. So in order to get this type of geometry, it's not like the surface tools are gonna unlock some magical set of features that can be created easily. You would still need to create all the geometry and it would just simply take quite a bit of time. So what I wanna do in this video is I wanna talk about how we could do this with surface tools, and then I'm gonna talk about the quick way to do this with forms. So to get started, I'm gonna hide the blade that has all of those additional features, and I'm gonna hide the hub because we don't really need to see it at all. And then what I wanna do is I wanna create a, um, in this case, I wanna create a sketch that has all of the geometry in it. And I'm not gonna create the entire blade using surfaces, but I wanna just show how it can be done. Now, again, as reference, if we take a look at this image, what we end up having is these waves in the, uh, the fan blade. And you no, know, those are critical to the way that this fan works. And in order to do that, we need to be able to create that geometry. So what we're doing is we're going from the straight curve here to the straight curve here, and we need to reference that geometry in the middle. And that's the tricky part of this. So what I wanna to do to get started is I'm gonna create a plane that is offset and is somewhere in the middle of this fan. So it doesn't have to be perfect because again, I'm not creating the entire thing, but I just wanna show the concept here. And then I'm gonna create a sketch on this. We're gonna right click, create our sketch. I'm going to use slice, which again is a temporary section view that'll show me exactly what geometry I'm working with. And I'm gonna to go to project include and create an intersection. So when I create an intersection, you can see that I have a curve here now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the spline tool and I'm gonna start up here and I've got 3D sketch turned on. I'm actually gonna hit escape and make sure that that's turned off. We don't need to be doing this in 3D, but I'm gonna start and I'm just gonna simply come through here and I'm gonna to start to build out those fan profiles. And I'm not gonna do this all the way, uh, but again, what I wanted to do is just show the concept. I'm gonna say, okay, here. And then uh, in this case, it's not gonna work perfectly, but you should still be able to get the point. So I'm just gonna drag this down a bit so that the, um, the loft hopefully works. Now I'm gonna finish the sketch, and then I'm gonna to go to my surface tools, and I'm gonna to say, create a loft gonna make sure that chain selection is not turned on. 
we're gonna go from one edge, and ideally this would be done before this fillet is on the corner, but we go from here, we're gonna to go to our spline, and then we're gonna to go to the other side. Now what this is gonna give me is this is gonna give me sort of that organic shape because what we're doing is we're starting through this edge, which is where we want everything to blend into. And then somewhere in the middle, we're giving it the shape of the blade. Now, what you're gonna instantly realize is it's gonna take a long time for us to get that geometry correct with a sketch. Now it's gonna be a lot of lines and arcs and splines, and it's not gonna be very easy to control. You'll need a lot of dimensions, a lot of constraints to have any sort of consistency here. So while this method is possible, it is not practical. It's just gonna take way too much time. So I'm gonna hit cancel. I'm gonna delete the sketch. I'm gonna delete the feature. The easy way to do this is for us to go into forms. We're gonna to go to utilities and convert. We're gonna make sure that we're using the B-Rep face to T-spline, and we're gonna select this face. Now, it's going to create a form face of this, but it's obviously going to extend the corners out. It's not gonna have rounded corners. Those are tricky and ultimately not very good for us to define in forms. But what I wanna do before I say okay is I wanna begin increasing the number of faces so that way I have a good idea where I want these blades to be. And I'm not gonna increase these too much because it's just gonna be harder for us to select. So now as I'm looking at this, I'm gonna skip the first one, I'm gonna use the second one, skip the third, use the fourth, skip the fifth, and so on. And, but then I also wanna increase the number of edges that I have here. And this is because the start and the end are going to be areas where we blend back into those edges. And all the ones in the middle are gonna be the ones that we manipulate. So we're gonna say okay to create this new form. Now we have a form version of that blade. And now here's the easy part for us. So now we want to start manipulating this. I'm gonna select this edge. On a PC, we're gonna hold down control and double click. If you're on a Mac, I believe it's command. While still holding down control, we're gonna just go through, select the start one and double click the next. And what this does, if you're used to using Blender or other programs, it's gonna pick the shortest path between our selections. So it makes it very easy for us to go through and select every other section that we want these blades. So again, we're gonna go through here, double click that. Once we have the edges that we wanna raise, we're gonna use modify edit form we want to make sure that our coordinate space is going to represent the correct direction. So sometimes this will be local per entity. Sometimes this will be selection space. And then I'm going to rotate this around, let's say, to the bottom. And you can see the, the direction that this is going. I'm just going to pull this up. And what I'm doing is I'm raising the ridges of those fan blades if we rotate this around. Now, the reason that we're doing it in this way is because this allows us to, again, let it blend into those corners. And again, we can increase the number of edges we want. It's just harder for us to make those selections. We're gonna say, okay, before you click or touch anything, make sure that these are still selected. We're gonna go to modify, bevel, and we're gonna add two beveled edges. And in this case, I'm gonna use a distance of 0.1. By default, it probably will turn on at 0.5 but we wanna do point one and have two segments. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna take our selected edge and it's going to add those two beveled segments to it. Now, keep in mind, we didn't select the edges. We only did these internal ones. So we end up getting T points, which I'm typically not a fan of. But in this case, if I use control and four to hide those edges, you can see that we're getting that smooth blended shape that we're looking for. So control and six will bring it back and I can finish the form, and now I have a surface that I can use for the face of that blade. Now, at this point, this gets a little tricky, but what I'm gonna do is select the outside face and hit delete, which will convert it to a surface. I'm going to extend this edge. I just wanna bring it up a little bit, and that way it extends past the surface I just created. I'm gonna say extend on the form I just created. You might need to hold down Control um, or Command. Again, if you're on a Mac, it's, I believe it's Command and just make sure that all of those extend out past these surfaces, and then we can trim them. So I'm gonna use this as my trim tool, and I'm gonna remove this top section, say okay, right click and repeat. Now my trim tool is gonna be that, um, that uh, surface, this nine surface here, so that's the original, and then we're gonna remove that outside edge and say okay. Now we can stitch these two together, and we should get a solid body back out of it. So now if we bring back the hub, 
we can use our pattern tool. We can create a circular pattern of this blade. We're gonna select the center as the axis, and I'm gonna increase that to six blades. And then we could combine them all together. Now, obviously, again, you can increase the number of divisions on the form. You can do this on the backside as well, but this is a very easy and quick way. Now, we showed the sketches and the surface way first, which took up about five minutes. This entire thing here took about five minutes as well. And that's with me going through and talking through it. Now, obviously you could spend more time and manipulate these models more, but ultimately that is a very quick way for us to create this geometry. If you have any questions on this, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.